Hey everyone, Skelessia here, and today we are going to talk about a very popular character in the Sonic franchise, as well as two of the games that he has starred in. Shadow the Hedgehog. Created by Takashi Ruzuka and Shiro Maikawa, Shadow the Hedgehog is considered to be a cool anti-hero and lone wolf. Always fighting against Sonic, but also sometimes always fighting beside Sonic. His first appearance in the Sonic franchise was in the 2001 game Sonic Adventure 2 for the Dreamcast. The very last Sonic the Hedgehog game for the Dreamcast, after Sega left the home console market. The game has three divided stories. Sonic and Shadow, Tails and Eggman, and Knuckles and Rouge the Bat, who also had a first appearance from this game. Sonic Adventure 2 is a 3D platform game that is divided into two campaigns. Hero, where you play as the three main heroes of the game, Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles. And Dark, where you play as the bad guys, Dr. Eggman, Rouge the Bat, who isn't really a villain but is a spy working for the government, and Shadow the Hedgehog. In the game, you learn the story of Shadow as being the ultimate life form. A weapon created by Dr. Robotnik's, aka Dr. Eggman's deceased grandfather, Professor Gerald Robotnik. Dr. Eggman met Shadow at a GUN, aka Guardian Units of Nations facility, and revived him with the Chaos Emerald after learning about him from the diary of his grandfather. Shadow offers to help Dr. Robotnik take over the world if only he meets him on an abandoned space colony called Ark with all the Chaos Emeralds. Shadow then goes around Central City stealing Chaos Emeralds. It really isn't all that clear yet of what Shadow is planning. He seems to have lost his memories and has only a desire to fulfill a promise that he can only remember making to Professor Gerald Robotnik's granddaughter, Maria. Shadow and Maria were really good friends on the Ark, probably the only friend he had. She, however, was suffering from an incurable disease called Neuroimmunodeficiency Syndrome. Professor Gerald Robotnik was working on a cure when Shadow was created with genetic engineering hoping that by creating the ultimate life form would somehow save his granddaughter. Maria really wanted to visit Earth one day with Shadow, but unfortunately would never make it. G.U.N. invaded the Ark on a pursuit of Shadow. Maria tried to help him escape, but was then shot and killed trying to help him. He believes that the promise he made to her was getting revenge for everything that happened to her and everything that happened on Ark. Shadow then meets up with Sonic, and then takes off, leaving Sonic to be arrested by G.U.N., who is mistaken to be Shadow. Which is kind of funny, as they meet up again later on the game. They call each other fakers, as if they look the same. It's a pretty weird scenario. Later on, Shadow shows Dr. Eggman the Eclipse Cannon, another powerful weapon created by Professor Gerald, and tells him, with this cannon powered by the Chaos Emeralds, Dr. Eggman will be able to take over the world. Rouge, who is an undercover agent for the government, followed Dr. Eggman to the Ark and also offers her Chaos Emerald to gain their trust. Amy and Tails break into G.U.N.'s base on an island to rescue Sonic, while Dr. Eggman threatens everyone on Earth to give in to his demands in 24 hours or Earth will be doomed. He demonstrates the Eclipse Cannon's power by using it to destroy half of the moon. Tails then comes up with a plan to use a fake Chaos Emerald to destroy the Eclipse Cannon. However, Eggman shows up and holds Amy hostage and has also found out about their plan and stops Sonic from using the fake Emerald and forces Sonic to go into an escape pod that is rigged with explosives. But somehow, Sonic is able to use the power of the fake Chaos Emeralds to use Chaos Control and teleports out of the pod before it explodes. Learning of Sonic's escape, Shadow is then sent to find him. Tails is left to protect Amy and soon defeats Dr. Eggman. Moments later, we see that Sonic has used the fake Emerald on the Eclipse Cannon and has disabled or destroyed it. Soon, they then realize that the Ark is falling and heading towards Earth a last plan created by Professor Gerald Botnik if the Emeralds were used. Professor Gerald wanted to take his revenge and destroy the Earth for condemning his research and killing everyone on the Ark, including his precious granddaughter Maria. This is where everyone but Shadow 
now becomes a team to try and stop the Ark from crashing into Earth by using the Master Emerald, which was stolen and shattered by Dr. Eggman, and then repaired by Knuckles. While everyone is trying to stop the Ark, Amy pleads to Shadow for help, which causes Shadow to remember what Maria actually requested for him to do before her death. Helping mankind was his real promise. Shadow then agrees and hurries to meet Sonic and Knuckles in the core, where they meet the Bio-Lizard, a prototype ultimate life form. While Shadow distracts it, Knuckles uses the Master Emerald to deactivate the Chaos Emeralds. However, the Bio-Lizard then uses Chaos Control to fuse itself to the Eclipse Cannon and becomes the final hazard, and helps the Ark continue its course to crash into Earth. Sonic and Shadow realize how serious things are now and uses the emeralds to transform themselves into superforms. They defeat the final hazard and uses the chaos control to teleport the Ark away from the Earth and back into stable orbit. Shadow's energy is drained as he falls to Earth but feels so relieved and happy that he has fulfilled his promise to Maria. Everyone is then happy and relieved. And then the credits with some cutscenes of the characters come on and then that's the end of the game. I say the plot of this game was very well written. The dialogue and some of the voice acting was a little cheesy, but hey, it was still a good game. It was one of the best selling games for the GameCube in 2007. Next Generation ranked it as the 42nd highest selling game that was launched for the PS2, Xbox, and of course GameCube between January 2000 and July 2006. Shadow has become a recurring character since the game and I am very happy that he has. He has become my favorite Sonic character for years. Shadow's only appearance was only meant to be for the Sonic Adventure 2 game, but he had grown so many fans that it had led him to coming back in the 2003 game Sonic Heroes, then also had his own spin-off game in 2005 called Shadow the Hedgehog. The Shadow the Hedgehog game was created to go deeper into Shadow's story and focus more on Shadow than the other characters. The development team wanted to capitalize the character's popularity. It is also the very first Sonic game to receive an E10 Plus rating as it does have some profanity and fantasy violence, plus gun actions, a lot of gun actions, sometimes buggy gun actions. Definitely the darkest game of the franchise and I would not recommend younger children playing it. I think even 10 is stretching a little. I would say at least 13 plus, but that is just my opinion. The 2005 Shadow the Hedgehog game starts off with a beautifully animated cutscene of Shadow reflecting the only memories he can remember as he is suffering from amnesia. He remembers himself running with a human girl away from some GUN troops inside Ark, but they soon become trapped and the girl looks at Shadow frightened. A gunshot is soon fired from one of the GUN and the screen goes white and Shadow's voice can be heard calling out the name Maria. In this game, Shadow doesn't seem to remember who Maria is, even though in the Adventure 2 he remembers her and the promise he made to her. The sky then starts to darken. Then creatures called the Black Arm soon drop from the sky and start to attack the city of Westopolis, which I thought the city in Adventure 2 was called Central City, but I don't know why the name was changed, if it is based off the same city. The leader of the aliens appears before Shadow and calls Shadow by name and then tells him to bring the Chaos Emeralds to him as promised. Confused and stunned at how the alien knew his name, Shadow starts to ask questions, but the alien leader called Black Doom just turns into a starfish and flies away, leaving Shadow wanting answers but realizes he needs to get the Chaos Emeralds first because Chaos Emeralds always seem to be the key to everything in Sonic games. Depending on who and how you help the characters you meet up in the game will affect the story and the outcome. You can help hero characters, the evil characters, or just be selfish and just help yourself. Even though all of the choices and different paths you may take will all eventually merge into one true ending like Adventure 2 did. With every mission completed, Shadow starts to learn more and more about his past and slowly regains his memories. After deciding which paths you want to take and you unlock all 10 endings to unlock the one true ending and collecting all the Chaos Emeralds, <gasps> the alien leader Black Doom uses his Chaos Control to bring a comet called the Black Comet to Earth. He explains that 
His species use humans as their energy source, and then the comet then releases a paralysis gas that paralyzes anyone who isn't of the alien race that inhales it. Shadow realizes he is immune to the nerve gas, and Black Doom tells Shadow that him and Professor Gerald Botnik made a deal. He promised to give Black Doom all seven Chaos Emeralds for his blood. That was the promise he was talking about earlier. Black Doom gave his blood to Shadow. Yeah, pretty crazy, right? Shadow, I am your father. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I had a moment. He tries to use a mind control on Shadow, but Shadow manages to fight it off after watching and listening to a video of Professor Gerald Robotnik and Maria encouraging Shadow to fight to protect. Black Doom then has no choice but to transform into a giant monster called Double Doom. Boy, what a name. Shadow knows he won't win this fight normally, so he uses the Chaos Emeralds to become Super Shadow and has a battle with Double Doom. After defeating Double Doom, Shadow uses his Chaos Control to teleport the Black Comet back to Earth's orbit and then uses the Eclipse Cannon on the Ark to destroy it. The nerve gas soon wears off and everyone can move again. Shadow is in the observation desk on Ark, holding up a picture of Maria and her grandfather, Professor Gerald. He reflects on her last words. Goodbye forever, Shadow the Hedgehog. The photo is then discarded and he is seen walking away. And the game ends. I played this game on the PS2 and I actually really loved it. The songs in this game were all very awesome too. My favorite is Waking Up by Julian K. <clears throat> that is one thing that makes Sonic games so popular as well. They always have good soundtracks. You the retro games had pretty cool music in them. Unfortunately for the game, Shadow the Hedgehog was given generally unfavorable reviews. A lot of which were very critical of the gameplay mechanics and how different it was from the other Sonic games. A lot of the critics derided the game's sense of maturity, especially for a Sonic game. They didn't like that guns and other weapons were given as choice to use. But it was voted the best game of 2005 in the official JetX Magazine Reader Awards and was named the best platformer of 2005 by Nintendo Power Readers. It was also a commercial success. However, some people say that blasting Shadow's enemies with wide variety of weapons is just plain fun. The game was also praised for the many possible paths that a player can make through the game. There are a lot of up and downs this game, but I personally really enjoyed it. Shadow and Sonic share many similarities. Some people like to call him the evil version of Sonic, although we all know that he's not really evil, he's just a little confused, right? He's just as fast, if not faster than Sonic though. Looking at Shadow, you notice he has rings on his wrists and ankles. He wears them to limit his full power that Shadow uses during extreme fights and other situations if he must. Amy also wears rings on her wrist for the exact same reason. With the rings off, Shadow is actually faster and also stronger than Sonic in all reality. But the debate with that is his shoes. Unlike Sonic's buckled running shoes, Shadow wears rocket skates for shoes. He skates when he wants to go faster. His running doesn't seem to be very fast. As Sonic might be the fastest with his feet, Shadow is fast with his skates. He is the ultimate life run after all, and he might still be able to go faster with the rings off still. His abilities can go far if need be. It has been a year since the Sonic the Hedgehog 2 movie has been released in theaters, and we Sonic fans and people who saw the movie have not forgotten the special ending of the movie that shows Shadow. I'm hoping to see more upcoming updates on where that was going because I really want to see Shadow in the next film. Really want to see him! I hope, though, that he isn't portrayed as a bad guy throughout the whole film. No, I am hoping something bigger will come along, and Shadow and Sonic starts off as enemies. But just like the games, they will have to fight together to save the world. I like it when they fight side by side. Anyway, this is my talk about Shadow the Hedgehog, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe, and thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next videos. Bye-bye!